Hey everybody, today my friend Matt from Anaheim Rod and Customs is going to show you guys how to paint high quality motorcycle parts. So stand by for some pro painting tips. Hi everybody, I'm Matthew Means from Anaheim Rod and Custom and I was hoping that I could share some important tips with you. So if you are motivated to try to paint yourself, you'll at least have the core basics here covered so that you can enjoy the process and end up with a high quality product at the end. First and foremost, you need to start with a high quality product. I know that you guys all have a bunch of old rusty tanks sitting around and I'm sure you see a bunch of stuff on eBay. You're thinking, wow, that's only a hundred bucks. I'm gonna buy that. But to be honest with you, spend the extra money, get a high quality part. TJBC has the best quality parts out there. These parts are almost ready to paint. With a few simple steps, you're gonna have great success and you'll be very happy with what you bought. So start with the right thing, right? Our first step in what we're doing today is going to be cleaning the metal. Now I know this part looks clean and it looks great. It's got fingerprints, it's got little residue, it's got little stuff going on with it. You just need a basic cleaner like Simple Green or Purple Power. You want to make sure you have some gloves on. Once you clean this thing, it's got to be cleaned the whole way through. You're not taking your gloves off. I know we all think, eh, it doesn't matter. but. Worst thing that you want is when you're done painting it, you have a little bit of paint peel off in the shape of your fingerprint. Now, nobody likes that. So I've got some diluted Simple Green right here. I'm just simply gonna spray it on the tank, right? I've plugged the holes. I'm not letting any water or anything get into the inside of the tank. So you can see I just put a simple plug there, some plugs down here. Gonna cover this whole thing with some Simple Green, take some scotch Bright, and scrub it. Right, try to get all the rust off, try to get anything like, you know, all the nooks and crannies. So I've got this thing clean. I've got some paper towels right here. Wipe everything off, right? You're not trying to smear it around. You don't want to wipe in circles. You want to essentially grab it, wipe it, flip your towel to a cleaner area, and then wipe again. Just wipe it straight off. We're eliminating any contamination, wax, grease, oils, the contamination could be water-based, the contamination could be solvent-based. So when we're done with this, we are gonna grab a little bit of like acetone or uh, brake clean and wipe it off one more time with that solvent also, just so that we're covering all of our bases with the different types of contamination that you could run into. Okay, so I've got some uh, brake clean. Now I've already wiped it off with the simple green and now I'm going to just spray it down with this. Same thing, I'm, I wanna wipe off, right? Everything is wiping off. I'm not rubbing it around, not doing anything weird. Just spray on, wipe off. Now that this thing is clean and dry, we're gonna go on to the next step, which is painting. And again, TJBC offers such a high quality part that you can just clean it and paint it. You don't have to do body work, you're not ending up having to repair anything or do anything like that. Although you should make sure that it fits on your bike just as a precaution because everybody's project's a little bit different, just in case. So now we just go to the spray booth. Okay, uh, we're moving on to the next step. I understand that you guys may or may not have a spray booth or something that resembles a spray booth, but if you hang some plastic in a shed or a garage and put up some fans, should be more than enough. You just want to make sure that you have a relatively low dust environment, that you're able to control the amount of dust coming into the area that which you'll be working. Um, the next step here is going to be scuffing the metal. We're going to be using what is called a direct to substrate or DTS or DTM type of primer. This primer allows us to spray directly over metal. It offers great adhesion. The product that we use here is a KD3000 series from House of Color. Um, they're available from Valspar, PPG, DuPont, they all offer these. Uh, it is like a catalyzed two component product. It is not a single component product. It is available in like an aerosol type spray can that you can pop the bottom and shake it up. First and foremost, there is some sanding already performed on this you know, straight from the factory, but we're gonna scuff all the edges and the main parts just to make sure that that primer is gonna stick really well. I'm using some 80 grit, hit all the edges, hit all the main parts, and try to be as thorough as you can.
So now it's been cleaned, it's been scuffed, and the next step is going to be a dusting and light wiping step. I'm going to wipe it off with just a clean paper towel just to get the dust off. Then I'm going to use a tack cloth. A tack cloth is a sticky cloth. You can get them like at a woodworking place, you can get them at Home Depot. I mean, they're pretty readily available, but it's like a small cloth that is kind of sticky. And when you wipe it over this, it'll actually pick up the dust that's on there and take it off so you have a, as clean a surface as possible. You grab a tack cloth. So now we're at the step where we're gonna be wiping this off again. We're wiping off, right? We're not, this is not a, a circular thing, right? Cause we're trying to get that dust off from sanding, trying to get that stuff out of there. Now, if you don't have, you know, silicone plugs, you can just get like a, go to Home Depot, you know, get a cork, grab a cork out of a wine bottle, put some tape around it. I mean, it doesn't have to be complicated or difficult to plug the holes. You just need something simple to plug it so that you can do what you need to do. I'm gonna wipe over this with the tack cloth. We're gonna go to the next step with the booth off and I'll explain what each step that I'm doing and what I'm spraying at that time. Uh, you are gonna be watching me use professional products and a professional paint gun. Now I mentioned it before and I, it's something that you can probably go to like Coast Airbrush and they're here in Anaheim and there's other places very similar to Coast Airbrush across the United States that offer a similar type of product. Now, this product essentially is professional catalyzed primer in a rattle can. You wanna look for like a DTS primer, direct to substrate, DTM primer, something like that. Stay away from acid etching primers. They're not real stable. You can have problems with that. You really wanna look for something that's like an acrylic or an epoxy or a hybrid. And you wanna make sure that it is a type of product that is also a sealer because you need to be able to spray directly over it or you're gonna add a step for yourself or you have to let it dry, sand it again, and then apply your base. And what we're doing here is we're showing you how to take this bare metal tank within an hour or less, have it hanging in a clean area, be able to pop one of those cans, spray your sealer on the metal, you know, just like, just like spraying something with a rattle can and then move on to your base coat and your clear. Most high quality paint shops will even be able to give you base coat and clear coat in those types of cans. And of course you can also just get a cheap gun from Home Depot. I have my House of Color KD3000 DTS sealer primer mixed inside my Tecna ProLite DeVilbus gun. Great products, great gun. Again, you don't need a professional gun. The cheap guns, they spray great too. So what you're gonna be watching me do here is applying one light coat of the sealer and then a medium wet coat. I wanna apply it as evenly as possible. I wanna make sure I cover all of the areas. If you get a run, it's okay. Let it dry a little bit, sand the run out, go on to the next step. It does have a window for you to be able to apply the base coat over the top of it. It's typically like three or four hours. The stuff is dry within an hour or less. So it will be dry enough for you to sand a little run out if you have a little mistake or you see a little, you know, tit in it or something like that. So no big deal. So I'm gonna put my mask on. Make sure that you do wear an organic vapor mask, okay? Don't put on an N95 mask, if you can find one even, but don't put one of those on because they will not help you. They will not protect you, okay? Um, you don't, you will get a headache. You will not feel good, trust me. So make sure you're wearing an organic vapor mask. Done, all the parts. If you're at home and you're asking yourself how important is the environment being wind-free, dust-free, moisture-free, very important. You wanna pick a day that's not very windy. You wanna definitely be in a space that has the least amount of dust possible. And you for sure don't wanna paint something and then leave it outside all night because condensation could fall on it. You wanna paint it in a protected area, leave it in the protected area, let it dry. Dust can leave little tips and tits and color, little spots and stuff that you can't color sand out. So keep that in mind. Now the next step that we're gonna be moving on to is applying your base coat. We're using a, a TJBC exclusive 
It is a carbon black metallic. It's a beautiful color. And uh, that's the base that we're gonna be applying to this tank. It was a custom mixed color that I mixed myself using House of Color products. And uh, I think that you guys will all enjoy its vibrance and depth and darkness. The sealer has cured. You can tell because it has flashed. The term flashed is used in the industry to describe when a product has lost its shine. And that's typically a good indicator that it has now dried. So now that our primer sealer has flashed, we're gonna be applying our custom mixed base coat. We will be applying one more coat of base and then we'll be applying the clear coat. I've got one more coat down and I'm about to do my orienting coat. I'm waiting very patiently. Painting is all about patience. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with what you're trying to do. Give yourself a chance to learn. Don't jump into it and try to spray it. Spray a couple other things first. Make sure you're happy with them before you do your tank, if you've never done it before. The more patient you are with yourself, the better the product will turn out. So I'm gonna apply this orienting coat now. Patience. <laughs> Now I know that you see me taking my mask off. There's fresh air coming in right above my head. When you're in your spray booth, don't take your mask off, okay? Just making sure I got all my angles. Gotta be patient with yourself. Always take a second look at what you're doing. Don't paint this in your garage. If you live above your garage, and then turn all the fans off. The tank will outgas for six months meaning solvents will continue to come out of it. So you do want whatever, you, whatever you're painting, wherever you've got your little spot set up, make sure that you are keeping it ventilated till it's dry to the touch. At least some kind of ventilation. You don't want to close the doors, you don't want to bring it inside, put it in your living room, go to sleep. You're not trying to do anything like that. These are toxic chemicals. They're dangerous, they're strong, they will make you sick. Be careful. I'm gonna apply a light coat of clear coat like a medium light coat, meaning it still is wet when it's applied, but it's very thin. And then I'm gonna be applying one more and then I'll do like a flow coat over the top. That flow coat will kind of smooth everything out and make it very shiny. Probably the biggest problem that you're gonna run into when you're applying a clear coat is applying more clear coat too quickly. My advice is wait till you can touch it in an inconspicuous area, gently. And it should be slightly tacky on your glove, not your finger. Don't touch it with your bare finger. But it shouldn't be slick. You shouldn't be able to move it around. It shouldn't feel wet. It's got to be dry enough that the next coat will not move or drop down on you. So let it dry really well. Put your next coat on. You can also check the you know, instructions on the can, believe it or not. And they'll even give you drying times between coats based on temperature. That's a great resource to help you understand how long to let it dry. Look at the shine on this tank. It shows you the quality of this tank. There's no waves in it. There's no dents. You know, obviously, please inspect your piece before you paint it. It's possible that there could be a small dent or something like that. You may have to fix something, but I think that I could speak confidently in saying that you can get a very high quality product essentially right out of the gun, right out of the box from TJ. You're gonna love it. I think this looks amazing. All right, now we're gonna shoot our final coat. This thing's looking beautiful. Well, thank you very much for joining me in this fun and exciting experience. Um, we're at our last coat. This thing looks amazing. Super stoked with how it turned out. Uh, we're going to let it dry and then we'll shoot some you know, pictures and video of it later so you guys can check it out in a little more detail. Of course, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And again, I'm Matt Means, uh, Anaheim Rod and Custom, www.anaheimrodandcustom.com. Check out what we do. We've got videos, we've got you know stuff going on there. We've got an Instagram, you know, you can got some great pictures coming up all the time. 
And of course, if you have any questions, you can also email me at the admin at anaheimrodandcustom.com email. I'm happy to answer any questions about paint for you. Thank you very much. Look at that. Turn that light, turn the light off. It's right outside the door. Okay, so let me, let me just